Each year, there are an enormous amount of wildlife seizures. So where do all these confiscated items go? Well, the answer is the National Wildlife Repository. It is a 22,000 square foot warehouse in Denver, Colorado. So we've arrived in Denver, Colorado, and we're on our way to the Wildlife Repository. This is going to be one of the most devastating shoots I think I've ever been on. Emotionally, this will take its toll. The warehouse is filled with evidence, thousands and thousands of square feet of wildlife and illegal wildlife trafficking evidence. After about 20 minutes on the road, we arrive. So we'll come through here. Sarah Metzer is an education specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She will be our escort through the warehouse. There we go. We'll flip on the lights here. Oh. So what we've got here is 1.3 million items. 1.3 million items may sound like a lot, but it truly is only a small percentage of the illegal wildlife animal trade. A golden monkey, colobus, colobus monkey, monkey fur coat, wildebeest. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of the items that we see that are coming in, perhaps they're being smuggled. They've got, you know, some sort of covering to them, and oh. the true, the true animal wildlife product is it's is underneath. underneath. So they cover it up. Mm -hmm. So you would just think it's regular old cowboy boot with some yep. sort of suede on it, but yeah. it's not. There's there's snakeskin underneath. Yeah, it, like. that is black coral that's what? been polished up. Yeah, so I think that's one of the things that it, it can be difficult to recognize that it is a wildlife product this is once coral? it's been carved or, or worked or produced into something. And then these beaded bracelets, this has, wow. when you peel this back to reveal uh, ivory, ivory, elephant ivory And it was just, on it the looked bangles. like a, just a regular a beaded bracelet that you yeah. can find in any store around the U.S., any little trinket store, and there's ivory inside. When most people think of ivory, they think of elephant tusk. But there are many different kinds of ivory. For example, walrus, sperm whale, hornbill, and hippopotamus. Wow. So this is a narwhal tusk. This is a narwhal tusk. This is, yeah. I have never seen one. Made of the you know same component that uh, other ivories would, including elephant ivory, but mm -hmm. it's got that very characteristic kind of spiral, spiral on it, which is one, one uh, theory behind the, the myth of the unicorn and, you know, the spiral horn here. So perhaps the way that it reached us was not the best, but what we're doing here is we're, we're repurposing, we're rewriting that story mm -hmm. and making it so that they become ambassadors for their species rather than just having them be former contraband. Mm -hmm. So this ties right back into what we saw when we were watching some of the shipments coming in from South Africa. So this is basically just a crate that you opened up or uh, Fish and Wildlife, CBP opened up, there you go. There's a white rhino inside. Yeah, potentially, so unlawful uh, imports into the country. I believe these two were out of uh, New York. Like the forensics lab, there are several specimens of each species. However, here at the Wildlife Repository, they do not store active evidence. Unlike the forensics lab, we don't have to uh, worry about chains of custody and, and those types of things. So everything that's here has the opportunity to be repurposed, and we don't have to necessarily worry that it, it needs to be held for any certain period of time. So this box here, I believe, has about 800 in this box. It's just a box full of juvenile turtles. And regardless of whether this species is endangered or not, if they're coming in without accountability, without any documentation that says, you know, how we're using this species, we're at a danger of losing even our common species. This is something known as a shaw tooth shawl. It's incredibly soft, very valued for its softness on the fashion market. What's it made from? Critically endangered Tibetan antelope. But you can't just shear the wool like you can a sheep or a goat. The fur has to be removed by way of killing the animal. Three to five antelope go into one of these shawls, which can sell for as much as $15,000. Does this all, all, seeing all of this take a toll? Inevitably, yes. I think you, you can't work around all of this and not have 
and not be disheartened when you do open up those boxes and those shipments that are coming in and seeing some of the the varying use that that all of these animals that and, and plants that you knew were once living are, are now kind of reduced to this state. It's not just 1.3 million objects for me, it's 1.3 million connections that I have with people <laughs> to teach them about wildlife. It is important to keep in mind that not all confiscated items are trinkets or tusks like we just saw. Many seizures are living animals like the South American kinkajou. Technically, they are alive, yes, but this is not how animals are supposed to live. They're usually kept in cruel conditions, barely surviving in tiny cages or garages as pets. But for some of these animals, there is a much better life ahead. Rescue facilities across America are taking abused, neglected animals and giving them a second chance at life. There are thousands of rescued animals who, after just a little bit of love and nurturing, are now living healthy, happy lives. We'll be right back with more Down to Earth the extinction crisis.